Welcome to another body language video. Today we're going to be looking at Bobby Fischer, who was an American chess prodigy and grandmaster, and was a world champion, obviously, and considered by some as one of the best chess players of all time, um, and had a famous rivalry with the Russian chess champion Spassky. Um, Bobby Fischer is portrayed in the media as somebody who is uncompromising, mysterious, arrogant, mentally unstable, obsessive, cold, because he has admitted that he enjoys seeing his opponent crumble mentally. He's, um, he's documented to have isolated himself a lot, having paranoid thoughts that Russians are after him, anti-Semitic rhetoric, the Americans are after him, so he's had a lot of negativity um, portrayed about him through the media. Another very complex person, very intelligent person. So we're going to watch this video and I'm just going to point out some things regarding his body language on the way. And uh, so forth. Where do you live now, my boy? Where does a chess uh, player live? I don't live anywhere, actually. Uh, I just live in hotels. <laughs> you don't have uh, permanent... You just you follow chess. The right, way surfers yeah. follow the sun. <laughs> and what's the money in chess? The money... Sure, I'd just like to point out before pointing out anything specific, I've got loads of notes down here about him touching his face, touching his chin, examining his fingernails, um, swinging his legs around. Um, so generally quite a fidgety person, touching his face a lot, and it, there are other interviews where he's examining his fingers and, and touching his face. That seems to be something that's kind of a baseline for him, for him perhaps, or perhaps awkwardness being on camera as well, we don't know. Money, uh, you know, could be better. It's, uh, get, it's getting better, but, you know, it's not like what you're getting or something. <laughs> it may be. It's in my contract. Uh, why is it that um, the Russians dominate the, the chess world? What have they got? Well, they're uh, subsidized by the government, and all their players are professionals, so they keep at it. We have a lot of talented players in this country, but for one reason or another, they just kind of fade out. They lose interest because there's not that uh, much incentive. And you, you've made some rather strong charges against them a couple of times uh, involving them. Uh, cheating. Cheating, I think, is the word that I was looking for. <laughs> yeah. What was the evidence of that? Well, they, uh, they came, they, well, one tournament I played in back in 62, that was a specific one I was talking about. Uh, they prearranged uh, about a dozen games among themselves to uh, eliminate me. How did they prearrange it? They had the strategy worked out among each other. Right, yeah. That yeah. isn't legal, though, is it? Is that no, it's against the rules, but... Uh, oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, that's what I meant, against the rules. Yeah. Uh, so that, that, would be, that would be the kind of cheating you mean? Oh, well, also, sometimes they would discuss the game among themselves while it's in progress. Get it like each other. And, you know, little things like that. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I complained a lot about it back then. Have you changed, you know, all the press about you has, has talked about your yeah, exactly cantankerous period where you would go stomping out and say, I cannot work under these lights. And what you're about to see in about four seconds' time is he starts to wrinkle the left side of his nose um, and it gives his face a facial expression of disgust. He wrinkles his nose like this a couple of times. There seems to be a snarl on his face. And if you put it into context, into what um, the interview is asking him, we can have a look at it as it happens. And so forth. And uh, then after the period where you were away, you came back milder. Happens now. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> Is there, there have been all kinds of rumors, like there's and a certain woman who changed. It happens. Uh, again. Someone gave and him again. a pill. Uh, <laughs> again. I, I don't know what the others are. Those are two of them. I just so it could be awkwardness, and it could be anger or disgust at thinking that somebody's changed him. He doesn't seem like somebody who, who appreciates anybody thinking that anybody could change him. Um, but again, people express things in different ways. It's just a little thing that he seems to have. Sort of handle journalists a little better, you know. Handle myself with people a little better. I haven't changed that much. You haven't changed that much. You no. just know how to handle the press now. Right, right. Is chess a gift? Could a guy who doesn't have a gift for it learn um, to be a great chess player? Touching his great? Team, no, he could be good, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look a, little, a, good play, I don't know, a lot of the top players I don't think are that talented. They just work like dogs, you know. Is it inherited, or do you come from this place? Uh, no. I mean, my mind is inherited, but no. But, uh, yeah. And what is it, what goes with a great chess right ability? Are you terrifically logical in your thought processes? Uh, can you see where an argument is going? Are you very neat in your uh, personal life, in your room? Do you leave your ties on the floor? Uh, uh, any of the above? I think I'm pretty logical. No, I'm not the neatest guy around. <laughs> 
But it does go with a kind of mental discipline? Or... Right, you have to... I mean, it seems to me in chess, you have to have the talent, but the guys who reach the top are the ones who keep at it. They have the character. They don't get distracted by other things in life until they got the title or whatever they wanted out of chess. You know? Can you have any other life and be a great chess player? Uh, not at the moment, no. It's, you know, first things first, right? Get the title. And, uh... and what's the pleasure? What's the moment of pleasure for you? Is it when you see the guy in trouble? What, what, where's the greatest pleasure? Respond to hitting the home run in baseball. Ah, oh, the greatest pleasure. Well, what you're about to see in a couple of seconds, I think about five seconds time, is Bobby will touch his fingertips on his left hand, I believe, and they start to become very active. If you've noticed, the interviewer throughout has been doing this with his left hand as well. And you'll see in, the, in a couple of seconds time that they start to mirror each other because they're both doing that. Well, when you break his ego, this is where it's at. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. So they're both doing that with their fingers. And when does that occur? When he sees that he's finished? So they're kind of mirroring each other that way. Yeah, you know, and he sees it's coming and uh, breaks all up inside. Yeah. <laughs> and you like that moment of just crushing the guy. Right, yeah. <laughs> what would you have been if you hadn't been the best player? Do you know, have any uh, idea? Uh, yeah, some kind of sport, something, you know. Sport. What you're about to see in about five seconds time is their bodies are now in synchrony, perhaps they've built rapport with each other, they become accustomed to each other, their voice uh, intonation is relatively similar, the pace of the conversation is quite leisurely, and their bodies are in synchrony at this point, at about 4.10 you'll see their hands both come up at a very similar time. I mean, I haven't gone to it much, but uh, I think I would have gone to somewhere. People expect to, I know when they meet you, they hear a guy who's been a prodigy. Start Did you see it? Both of their hands kind of rip, rose at the same time. Let me just play that again. Like just when you were what? Six. Six. I mean, I haven't gone to it much, but uh, I think I would have might have gone for something like that. Yeah. People expect to, I know and when they meet you, they hear a guy rise. who's been a prodigy. There we go. Start Hang playing on. just when you were what? Six. Six. Yeah. yeah. And they, 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 for some reason, they expect a frail little fellow with thick glasses and they're always surprised by the width of your shoulders and the fact that you look like an athlete uh, or swimmer or something like that. Are, are you good at those things too? Well, I haven't really, you know, developed myself too much in sports, but I like a little swimming, tennis. Uh, just mainly I just use it to keep in shape for the chest. That sounds funny. <laughs> yeah, they laugh to keep yeah. in shape for chess, but it, where does it take strength? Well, you're sitting there for five hours. And, uh, how, do you, how do you develop that part of your body? <laughs> Oh, I mean, uh, you know, what's that song, the neck bone is connecting, all that stuff, you know, yeah. you've got to have the blood coming into your head, and it, the reason that players fade out, say, in their 40s or 50s is because uh, about the fourth or fifth hour of play, they lose uh, you know, their concentration, their stamina's gone. You have a lot of stamina. Yeah, they, people do laugh at that, but it does take, it takes a terrific amount of uh, stamina, I'm told. Uh, Another silly way to ask the question was, a baseball player's legs go, what goes first on a chess player? <laughs> Here, if we freeze it, this is a great shot to show, I mean, obviously they have built rapport. Sorry, I'm in the library. Yeah, one second. One, just a reminder, the library closes at 11.30, issue desk closes at 8 p.m. I <laughs> uh, hope you're enjoying the fact that you can bring a uh, drink with a lid in the library now, but please uh, bear in mind to be very careful because we have a lot of uh, irreplaceable items. <laughs> A lot of people have been asking about tomorrow. Yes, the clears are going strike for two days. He'll uh, end soon, don't worry. No, I don't know how that's going to impact library services, I expect, severely. One thing to bear in mind is any books that are due Tuesday or Wednesday are now due Thursday. The library has done this in case anyone does not want to cross the picket line. Thanks. So there we have it. Yes, in my library you can now bring cups with lids on. So now that you know that vital piece of information, um, now we can show from this shot here that their bodies are, are in, in synchrony in a way. Their arm and shoulder levels, um, so they're, they're very similar. So Bobby Fish has got one up and one down, shoulder-wise, so it's slanted. This guy has one up and one down, so it's slanted. Their arms are both resting over their chairs. These two hands, both of their, I believe that's their left hands, are sagging in some way. Um, and also, one leg is also bent, one outstretched in both of them. See, bent, bent, stretch, stretch. Um, and if you look at the, the distance between their feet, this has got closer and closer throughout the interview. So here they're relatively close. I'm sure they could almost touch each other here. And this is, they've got closer since the beginning of the interview. If, if we look, for example, at 139. 139. Let's have a look. 
Have you changed? You know, their feet are significantly further apart. So generally, they they've got into synchrony a bit more. And I think this is a beautiful example of how non-verbally people can become in synchrony. And this move, this video is only seven minutes and four seconds long. So it really doesn't take that long to build a rapport with somebody non-verbally. Hope you enjoyed it.